Hey everybody, Mark Heaps here for PSD Toots, and I'm going to do another video review of a filter that you can play with for Photoshop and all of your creative outlets out there, and it's called Filter Forge. Um, got my hands on this filter and have just been kind of overwhelmed with how big and powerful it is uh, as a utility for working on projects. So uh, let's just go take a quick look at it over in Photoshop. I downloaded the, the filter from here on their website, filterforge.com, and it was really, really easy to install. It was something that uh, downloaded pretty quickly. Um, I have a decent broadband connection, so that uh, that helped. And uh, after I ran the DMG to install it, it automatically got added as a plugin inside of Photoshop. And I'm running, I'm running CS5 right now, um, so you'll be able to see that in my filter menu down here. So we've got Filter Forge and then Filter Forge 3. Now, like I said earlier, it's it's an amazing uh, utility. Um, but what is it? Well, it's it's probably the most advanced and customizable plugin I've ever seen for Photoshop. Um, it actually contains an extremely dynamic array of controls that are that are part of over 8,000 community filters that you can add to the app at any time. You know, so this is this is one of those things that makes it a unique approach as a filter and a plugin um, because the app itself is open to a community who then can create their own filters. So you have access to all of those filters at any time. And uh, that means that the filter is always going to be growing. The application is always going to be growing. What makes it so great, though, is the fact that it renders unbelievably well. So let me just show you some examples here. This is a photo that I took out in uh, behind an abandoned building in central Texas. I found this rusty old Dodge pickup truck and uh, liked the photo, but I thought it'd be fun to play with it and use some filters. So the first one that I found was one called Sketchy Painting. And uh, let me just turn this on so you can see it. Now, normally when I find painting filters or painting actions, you know, they do a lot of path work or they do some masking, there's some smudging, there's usually a little bit of grain or texture and then some blurring that goes on. But I'm, I'm left pretty disappointed most of the time with that effect. The moment I ran this through Filter Forge, I was blown away. And let me just zoom in here so you can see it. The texture of how it painted, where it cross hatches and where it mixes the media looks so organic to me compared to what I've seen out there on the market with other tools, this was just really, really impressive, really amazing. Now, it wasn't very fast at rendering, but the quality that you get definitely made it worth the wait. So again, here's the original, and then here's that painting effect. And I didn't do much in the way of changing settings. I pretty much clicked one of the presets, and this is what I got. Now, another option they have out there is engraving, and this is another one of those type of effects that I've seen out on the market but I've never been really impressed with the effect of it, usually because it flattens out a lot of my shapes and contours. But the Filter Forge engraving effect looks really, really good. It followed the light source. It followed some of the, the natural contours of the surfaces. Um, you know, And this got me pretty excited for effects that I can produce for making vintage graphics. I could easily take this and throw in some blending modes and get this to look like it was burned or engraved or vintage on an old wood crate. Um, or maybe some old furniture. So, you know, there was a lot of options that get created by having this effect. Now let's uh, let's actually take a look at the app here just to see what it looks like. So just go to Filter, come down to Filter Forge, choose Filter Forge 3 here, and you're going to see the app gets launched. It's going to go ahead and render a preview over here on the right. And this is your main preview area. Now you can see the last thing that I did was this engraving effect. So uh, let me pick something else over here. And the way that this works is over on the left of the application, you've got categories for your filters. Over here on the right, you actually have the filters that exist within that category. Now, if you want to search by a particular phrase, you can just type in the search box up here, and that'll go through all of your filters. And anything that's tagged or marked a certain way, it'll find for you. Um, once you have a filter that you've chosen, and I've just chosen comic book, and you can see over here on the right, it's already rendered. It's a, it's a really nice effect, actually. Kind of reminds me of that movie, Scanner Darkly. Um, over here on the left, we've got six factory presets for that filter. And anytime you pick one of these filters, you're going to have some presets down here at the bottom. And then if you click on the settings button, you have a series of controls to modify and adapt the look and treatment from that preset. So again, like I said earlier, you have a lot of modularity. It's really customizable. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to play with. And these particular controls are specific to this filter. So any other filters that have been made aren't necessarily going to have these same controls. Now, 
it comes with a fair amount of filters. And you can see up here, like I mentioned earlier, there's some really cool patterns. There's some great textures. Um, there's a series of miscellaneous filters that are just kind of fun to play around with for creating shapes and forms. And, and it automatically can be used to make seamless background patterns, which is really nice for when I'm doing web work or video work and I need something seamless. Um, you can see down here there's a checkbox even that says seamless tiling. So that's, that's really, really helpful. But uh, what if I want something that's not here? Well, remember I said earlier, there's more than 8,000 filters available to this application. So what you can do is actually just go back over to the website and underneath filters here on this tab, you could do a search. I'm gonna use one that I searched earlier called pencil sketch. Again, that's another one of those filter effects that I'm usually pretty disappointed in when I find them out in the market, but uh, this one looks like it's gonna be pretty good. So you can see it found some results here. There's a couple of different options for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one, pencil sketch by row. Looking at the preview, okay, before and after, that's actually a really nice effect. But what I love about this is once you've found a filter effect that you like, over here on the right, there's a button that says, open this filter in Filter Forge. So if you already have it installed, you just press this button, it'll say launch application, it connects to the server, it downloads the filter, adds it over here in your filter area, and you're already seeing it begin to preview. Now that's a beautiful looking effect already and it hasn't even finished rendering. And if I don't like the way that it looks, all I've gotta do is come over and change these settings. We've got dark pencil, light pencil, medium pencil, all kinds of controls over lighting and gamma, pencil strength, pencil width, etc. So uh, it looks like I'm ready to make an aha music video from the 80s, if you've ever seen that. Um, there are lots of presets over here again. Like I said, anytime you have a filter, it's usually got some presets included with it. So the community is is really advanced. They're not just sort of making some hokey filters. The people that are making in the community seem to be really thinking about all of the ways that you can work and use the particular filter that they're creating. Now, if you wanna go even further, and I mentioned this earlier, you can actually make your own filters. And up here in the top right, you can see there's a button that says Filter Editor. Now what this does is it gets into a node-based editor so that you can generate your own filter without doing any code whatsoever. So you can see here, it brings up this dialog box that says, would you like to edit this filter? A copy will be created. Or do you wanna create a new filter? Well, if I say edit this filter and just choose Open Filter Editor, you'll see we get this node-based window that shows all of the strings and controls of how that filter was made. Now this one's pretty advanced and you can see there's lots of stuff going on with controls and the connectors here. I'm just gonna cancel out of that. It's a little intimidating when you first see it, but I can tell you as I started to play with this myself, um, in about 20 minutes, I actually managed to make my own filter and I was pretty excited about that. So if I just come down here to where it says my filters, I managed to make a really simple little filter. I was just trying to produce something that was kind of like a silk screen effect with a single ink. And so you can see it rendering here. I used some really basic controls in my settings. You've got control over hue, refraction, the size of the pixels and some variation. And what this does is allows me to play around a little bit further and continue making new filters based on this effect. So. Like I said, it doesn't have to be super complicated. If I go into the filter editor again, you can see to edit this filter, I open that filter editor and here's my photograph, here's my image. And it's telling this to go through refraction to offer a slider control for refraction. This is gonna go through hue and saturation. We have a slider for hue. At the end, it adds this Perlin noise and it continues editing out from there. So really not that complicated to get a unique effect. And then we have the end result. When you're done, you can save that filter and it gets added to your library. So think of all the options of things that you could edit, change, and manipulate based on filters that other people have produced. That's really, really exciting if you're the type of person that likes to get into the gears and the nuts and bolts of how things work and really customize a signature look for your processing. Well, I hope you guys like looking at Filter Forge. Um, it's a really cool app and plugin for Photoshop. Uh, I'm still deep diving into it myself, and I'm going to continue deep diving into it. But uh, if you have any questions, leave some comments on this video review, and uh, I'll try my best to answer them or get answers for you. I'm Mark Heaps. Thanks for watching.